I want to take a few minutes and uh, talk about a disease that uh, uh, kind of now we view as a second-tier sexually transmitted disease, and that's syphilis. In our society today, uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia really capture the headlines along with AIDS because of its high fatality rate. But the sexually transmitted disease that has the longest and most interesting history is syphilis. And today, of course, syphilis is still with us. Uh, fortunately, there are some features of the syphilis uh, organism that allow us to keep it under control in most sectors of uh, our society. Syphilis is caused by a spirochete, a very thin corkscrew-shaped bacterium. In fact, this bacterium is uh, so thin and uh, difficult to stain that we had to develop a, a, a different type of microscope. Instead of using a bright field microscope, you have to use a dark field microscope and shine the light in from the edges to see this organism. The other interesting thing about syphilis is that we can't culture it on a Petri dish. So it's a little difficult and has been over the years to really readily diagnose it. Fortunately, syphilis has a minimal size genome and doesn't mutate very easily, so it's readily treatable with antibiotics, which is good news for everybody who might come in contact with it. Syphilis is transmitted by direct intimate contact. About 90% of the cases are transmitted by sexual intercourse, but it can be transmitted wherever uh, uh, contact occurs. Uh, most, second most common is uh, kissing or lip-to-lip -lip transmission. The reason for that is because in the initial stages of syphilis, which uh, the symptoms are divided into four stages, that primary stage, wherever the spirochete enters, uh, whether it's on the penis or the lip, it forms a little sore called the chancre. The uh, anomaly of this sore is that uh, no matter what you do, uh, get penicillin treatment, don't do anything, rub peanut butter on it, uh, the sore will go away. And for most of us, once the sore is gone, we think we're healed. And that probably is the most insidious aspect of syphilis because once that symptom is gone, uh, you still have syphilis. Then you enter into the secondary stage uh, a couple of months later where most people uh, get a rash, but it's a non-inching rash. In fact, sometimes it's a little hard to notice this rash. And the other symptoms include things like uh, fatigue and fever, things you wouldn't associate with a sexually transmitted disease. And then syphilis gets really tricky. It goes into a latent period when there are no symptoms present. The person thinks uh, they don't have the, uh, the disease and then it pops back up sometimes uh, uh, years later. The normal duration during this latent period is two years, but it can be as long as 30. And when it comes back, it comes back with a vengeance. Uh, fortunately, only about 25% of the people get this tertiary form of syphilis, but when they do, it can cause things like heart damage and affect your central nervous system, causing dementia and insanity. Well, uh, treatment, as I mentioned, is pretty easy. Prevention's even easier. I mean, it's a sexually transmitted disease. As long as you don't have contact with an infected individual, you won't pick it up. There is one way that syphilis is transmitted, though, that is problematic. Syphilis is one of the few organisms that can cross the placenta and infect the fetus. We call this congenital syphilis. And so if the mother has syphilis or contracts it during pregnancy, after a few months, the organism can travel across the placenta, infect the fetus, and cause all sorts of problems. Many of the uh, infected uh, fetuses are stillborn. And if they are born, they often carry uh, manifestations of the syphilis infection, uh, anatomical deformities like Hutchinson's teeth or saber shins, or uh, uh, other problems, uh, including uh, reduced uh, mental activity and some physical manifestations. And of course, that was problematic with syphilis, you know, until uh, we discovered uh, a treatment for it. The origin of the disease, uh, of all the diseases really that have uh, gone through and caused uh, pandemics in the world, syphilis has the most intriguing origin. Uh, some people say that it's the only disease that went the other way in the Columbian Exchange. Some people have evidence uh, that uh, syphilis has always been around in the population, particularly in Europe where it was really documented in the early 1500s and that it mutated and changed and adapted to the society at that time, became more virulent and caused 
at least for about 100 years, an incredibly serious disease with a high fatality rate, and then slowly adapted like many diseases do. Uh, you just have to decide. Uh, maybe it's, uh, there's a very similar disease called Yaws that's still present in Africa and uh, could be an adaptation of that. But a couple of other interesting things about syphilis. It was in the early 1900s that Paul Ehrlich, who received a Nobel Prize for his work in delineating uh, the human immune system, set out to find uh, what became known as the magic bullet, the very first chemical compound or form of chemotherapy to treat a disease. And the disease that he selected, because it was so difficult to treat and so insidious in its long-term ramifications, was syphilis. Prior to Paul Ehrlich's work, one of the most common remedies for syphilis was uh, was taking a tablespoon of mercury periodically with its uh, <laughs> horrible side effects, and it didn't have any effect on syphilis. Paul Ehrlich tried uh, hundreds of compounds, finally settling on compound uh, 606, and this arsenic-containing compound did indeed uh, kill syphilis if administered over a long enough period of time. Realizing its toxicity, he then uh, continued to work on a compound, eventually settling on compound 914, neosalivaricin, which was the first chemical that had any efficacy against a bacterial pathogen. It was used successfully for many, many years until penicillin uh, came uh, on the market to treat uh, syphilis. Well, today syphilis is still around. It's present in developing countries. Uh, it's present in the United States. Uh, we have a modest number of cases in certain groups, syphilis is on the rise, surprisingly. Uh, men who have sex with men is the largest growing group of uh, syphilis uh, patients. 75% uh, of all cases since the year 2000 are in this group. Fortunately, congenital syphilis is on the decline. Well, syphilis, uh, a disease that uh, entered the human population uh, a long time ago, manifest itself by causing great epidemics in the 1500s in Europe and is still with us today, a sexually transmitted disease that can cause a lot of problems if it's unchecked.